All right, and we're back for the second semifinal game here. I'm here with Heckma Harrison, Dalton Jernigan. I'm Chris Heron, giving you the action here. The Westlake Chaps against the Woodland Highlanders. And guys, hopefully it's as action-packed as that last one. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> okay. Are you really? Um, <laughs> seriously? I think, I think that fourth quarter maybe gave a couple, yeah. few, a, few, a few folks some heart attacks. Yeah, I'm still shaking, honestly. I, that, was a, that was a heck of a performance by both teams. But again, and I know that we've had a, a chance to sit down and, and talk over the phone with Coach Burke and with Coach DeMeo. And again, like Dalton, you know, with talking about the Westlake side, you know, I think there was a lot of interesting points that Coach Burke brought up. And, uh, you know, as far as them attacking the Woodlands, what do you think they're, uh, they're going to come out with here? Certainly, and really glad that, you know, Coach DeMeo and Burke had the time to share some of their thoughts with us um, yesterday when we got a chance to catch up with them, or Thursday perhaps. And the thing that I found that was really interesting and fascinating is – you know, these two just played each other within the last, like, two weeks. And Westlake came out on top. And, you know, Coach Burke felt like that was an advantage. And a lot of times you could look at it as like, oh, man, we just beat them. Um, you know, the team that lost is the one that's going to have that advantage. But he felt like, hey, that really gave both teams an advantage going into the playoffs because, you know, Westlake down in Austin, Woodlands down in Houston – and the competition they typically play against in division is substantially lower than what ESD and Highland Park have up here in Dallas, just because there's more depth. Yep, and, and Heckma, you've seen the Woodlands against the Scots, right? So, you know, as far as your notes, what do you think they're, they're going to come out with as far as their matchup again against the, uh, the Chaps here? I mean, these guys can play tempo. They really are. The Highlanders really have a lot offensively. Uh, they are able to score at will. I think also the way their goalie set up, they go with a two goalie system, play one guy in the first half, another in the second. So watch out for that. But I think this is a, a Woodlands team that you have to give them the respect. Also, beating Garden City. Um, they're just a really battle-tested team, and they have faced a lot of adversity. So, uh, you talk about these two teams facing off between each other. Sometimes familiarity uh, breeds contentment, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot of contentment out here on the field. Yep, right you are. And our recap and our pregame right there, just talking about both teams, brought to you by C2 Education. As we have the Woodlands, and they open up the scoring right away. And it looks like it's going to be Mr. Ridge Crouch with that lefty step down off the wing. You know, and we, we certainly know he loves to drop his hands. Um, but he had that little hitch and pump fake that really got froze the goalie and then incredible placement putting that low and away. Yeah, that's a great job by Ridge, and I love the, the, the analogy, dropping his hands, getting that low shot, the roller, nothing you can do about it. They have so many guys, and that's what I was wanting to talk about in the open, is just their ability to be a quick strike offense, and you saw it right there on display. Yeah, for those of you that are just joining us, the Woodlands wearing red, the Chaps of Westlake wearing their whites with the blue shorts, as the Woodlands... Leaning on their face-off man, Mr. Asher Presnell, the sophomore, gets the ball again for the Highlanders, and here they come again on offense. As we get Cooper Starkey, the senior, swinging it back down to Jack O'Rourke. O'Rourke taking it down the lefty alley. Pass back up top. It's gonna be Starkey again. Long pass towards the corner, and it's going to be the sophomore and Kimo Kaletsis with the initiation going down the righty alley. Rolls back into space. Back over to O'Rourke. O'Rourke sweeping to his right, trying to survey, nothing doing. Kaletsis sweeping to his left, knifing through the middle of the field. Shot's going to go wide. And the ref's going to give it to the Highlanders still. Looks like it was Charlie Strahey with the backup as he takes it back up the lefty hash. Over to Crouch. Starkey again. Westlake defense settling in here in their man-to-man. -man. Survey from behind the goal. Climbing up the hash. Skip pass, picked up and corralled, saved. Rebound. 
Yeah, Silva <laughs> did a good job adjusting. I think he's starting to figure out that he likes to drop his hands and sling, <laughs> sling saw, it from the shoelaces. You saw that, right? <laughs> They're like, no, you got to get me with that again. And Crouch goes right back in his bag with that roller. It's like, nah, man, you got to try us from a different angle. Well, uh, back in my Houston time, I, I've actually coached that kid. And, He's liked that shot ever since he was probably in third or fourth grade. Yeah, so. I, I remember that way back in those old tournament days when we'd come up here in Plano. Shout out to Mr. Crouch if you're tuning in or if you're in the stands listening in. As the Woodlands gets the ball back. As Westlake still looking for their first possession here offensively. Well, certainly, you know, Woodlands and, and having Presnell at the faceoff certainly helping them in terms of maintaining possession of the ball, but it seems like their sticks offensively are super dialed. They're very quick. They're moving off ball. Certainly, Kimo is probably going to be one of the most exciting offensive players we're going to see the entire weekend. Skip pass from Kimo to O'Rourke. O'Rourke getting it to the island, drops the ball. And again... Westlake playing aggressive like they always do on defense. All those conversations that we've had with Coach Burke and his aggressive style certainly trickling into the personality of the Chap defense as they get a turnover. And here they come with their first offensive attempt out of the clear. Well, you know, we talked to Coach Burke, and he really wants his guys to go out there and get after those Woodlands players. They're doing an excellent job of avoiding that with their speed. But... You know, that's their game plan and part of their DNA is to be extremely physical. It certainly helps because he probably has one of the best lacrosse football Ooh. relationships. Shot goal, rebound, rebound again. Down here in Texas. I mean, it certainly helps when you have a son, Ethan Burke, who's now playing football at UT. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing his son on the field. And I said to someone, why is this kid holding a lacrosse stick? <laughs> <laughs> that should be illegal. Well, hey, he's 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Yep. It's probably because his dad's from Maryland. Yep. That's why. Okay. And what there is it is. going on? Yep. <laughs> no shortage of height in the Burke family. Ethan Burke's mom, also a volleyball player, I believe San Diego I State. Mean, athleticism is at a premium in the Burke household. We get it, right? <laughs> but I'm telling you, I see this kid walk on the field. I'm like, oh, my God. Yep. Put a helmet on this kid. And somebody says, yeah, they do. Pass inside. What a handle and a wow. goal. How about As that? the Chaps open wow. up the scoring. Oh, well. Man. Yeah, wow. We. It looked like it was Brad Mays, the senior, another football player, speaking of football. <laughs> I'm telling you. He's just... and, and right here, I mean, they do a good job sweeping over the top, penetrating the middle of the defense, and then the finesse by Brad Mays coming down with the ball and able to get his head around to make eye contact and put that in the back of the net. No, call it what it is, a pirouette in the air. I mean, come on, <laughs> 3, 360 goal. Yep. As yeah, I, I'm sure the senior high school boy is going to love that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Presnell's got the face off again. But I thought it was interesting, too, that conversation that we had. Speaking of what you're saying and there, Heckma, is the relationship that Coach Burke developed with Coach Dodge when Ethan was going through the football recruiting process, also playing lacrosse, finally gave all of the football kids completely off for spring football so they could focus on lacrosse. I thought that was a great gateway into creating that relationship between those two sports. And that certainly is not an easy task. I know my time at Highland Park, that's something that we yeah, really, yeah. re <laughs> really struggled with. I mean, we get the championship weekend and all of our juniors are just dead yeah. because they're going through spring training. So and I, took the words right out of my yeah. mouth, but I wouldn't have used them as an example. Uh, but it, you, you went right to the apex of uh, the kind of coaches that would not go for that. It was the same thing with me and Coach Koch at Memorial, trying to get those guys to stop deadlifting and squatting in the middle of the yeah. Super Regional pr preparation. But that's a conversation for maybe a podcast. There's a pass out in front. And it'll look like it might have been walking through the crease, but it looks like the officials missed it. Here we come again. Inside roll. It almost hung on. They almost too. had it. Oh, and it just almost a little rolls hockey in. action. Yeah. We got some Stars fans yeah. out in the field. Yeah, it looks like, what is it, game six tonight? No, yeah, yeah game six. Yeah, game six. Stars can close it out in Seattle. Yeah. We'll see. Come on, baby. Give us some Western <laughs> Conference action down here. Yep. And they're still going to have to meet my Hurricanes eventually, so... We'll see how that ends up. 
Get the Westlake making this clear. Yep, stick work at an all-time premium right now for the Highlanders. Pass back right in front, shot and a goal. Cooper Starkey. How pretty was that setup? Well, that was a great patience by Sloan Walker Stewart um, driving up the field that gave Starkey time to slip underneath with that um, shallow cut. But you see it right here, driving up the field. We get some good off ball action here by the LR commit, Cooper Starkey, who's you got to lay up right in front of the cage, puts it in the back of the net. Yep, one little one stop shop right there on that goal. Speaking of one stop shops, that replay brought to you by Groovy Hughes, your one stop shop for paint power and washing. As we get another face off, trickling but going in favor of the Woodlands at the moment. Still a scrum for it, but they do maintain the possession. And here they come again, attempting to clear this ball. And it looks like Westlake was in a little bit of a press ride. Not exactly the nine and a half or the 10 man, but a definitely a press. Maybe a bit of a panic there from the pass. Yep. Sometimes, sometimes you bring that extra guy down, it can create a little bit more panic. Oh, I think uh, it looked like Woodlands was about to fall into their 10 man right there, but then backed off. Yep. So the difference for those of you listening at home, a 10 man is everybody's on somebody. A nine and a half, the goalie's kind of split in two, kind of like a free safety. And a very similar, if you're making the basketball comparison, it's going to be equivalent to a full court press. I love calling the game with you guys. It's like you're speaking your own language, <laughs> you know? And, I, and then you, you explain it at the end. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Like, I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're happy to do it, my man. That's, 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 All right. we're, well, when you have to call box lacrosse, you have to speak to non lacrosse, field lacrosse, and box lacrosse. Yeah. So get a little bit of practice, but. I think that's also, I mean, there's so many different similarities in basketball, you know, and hockey and soccer and just being able to relate, you know, hopefully just continues to grow the game down here. Yep, and that's our goal. Again, Coach Jernigan and I have, have shared some some opportunities to continue to grow the game, and that's the, mainly the reason why we started calling these games is to just educate and continue to grow it. No, and just from an X, X's and O's standpoint, I think both of these teams have withstood each other's first initial uh, shots, but you can tell schematically they match up will, really well, even with Westlake being the, the second seed uh, here coming into this weekend. Yeah. And speaking of shots, that was a little heater by Caden Frank. <laughs> yes, it was. And, and I don't think a lot of people understand how difficult that can be shooting full stick length as a defenseman on the run. Typically, a lot of times you're going to have to choke up. Yep, absolutely. And we get another pass going out of bounds. See, the refs are going to have a little bit of a conversation to figure out who to award the ball to, and they still keep it with the Woodlands. As we get another clear attempt here. You see them making it a little bit more difficult on this ride. Yep. Great give and go. That and was the, a very uh, nice clear. one. Starkey stepping in past the inside shot and a goal. Ridge Crouch with a second there. That was so pretty. And there it is. But what I love the most was the LR senior who uh, is going to be playing for Lenore Ryan and Coach Paradine next fall and spring was him selling that. He's coming down. He has that wind up, sells that defenseman, and then just gives him a little lever pass to Ridge Crouch, mixing it up going with the overhand shot there. Yep, and again, the Woodlands electing to go with their sophomore and steal Kroom. They've done this before and potentially will go with Christian Clinton in the second half, who's headed to Roanoke College to play in between the pipes. As the Chaps get possession here off that faceoff. Going with the counter. Is that as unconventional as it looks going with the two goalie system? Or no, that, have you seen no that I mean, a yeah. perfect example, like, the, you know, my Wolverines finally taking their first ever Big Ten title. I mean, you had those guys split in time, and then finally they went with the freshmen uh, in the championship game just because, again, Shane was struggling a little bit between the pipes. They start the freshmen, the fir you know, the first time ever, and, you know, he, he stands in there, and you know, they were split in time for up throughout the entire Big Ten playoffs. So there's a shot and a goal by the Chaps. And that's going to be Gage Frickenschmidt, the senior, headed to the University of Texas next fall. 
with the goal. And, and uh, Hegman, a lot of that's just going to depend on just the talent. Uh, we get the replay here. You know, just a lot of time. You got to get out there. I think Elijah was sloughed in a little too much. Should have had a better sense of urgency on getting on that shooter's hands. But back to your point, a lot of it's going to depend on just the talent level of the goalies. Do they have a comparable talent level? And then the, just their playing style. You know, can they, you know, can you have a guy jump in at halftime, you know, who didn't, has been sitting there on the bench? So it's going to come down to their playing style, mental toughness, capacity, and then also their overall talent ability. Yep, as we get a little bit of a push with possess or push without possession, so it's awarded to the chaps. And here they come again, trying to tie this ball game. Just over two and a half in the first, our second semifinal game of the day. Ali Dodge. Ooh, swim move over the top <laughs> shot just high. A little nifty action right there. It's Riley Wright with the yeah. look. Yeah, Riley Wright. You saw him swimming through a triple team, getting inside. And, and that's the right time to do it. When you have that slide and if you're a big body by Riley, that swim move can be, you can really use that to your advantage. You know, the other time when you use that is, you know, setting up with a roll dodge against a long stick and then coming back in a split swimming over that long stick. Yep, pass out in front. Grady Bartlett with the look. Was backed up by the Chaps. Little that probably not so much. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> Don't go back to the well too many times yeah, yeah. as he gets the rear check and the ball comes off. But I think possession will stay with uh, Westlake. Yeah, so That's what we call uh, running into the meat. Yes. <laughs> Flipping sides of the field. Don't run back to where you just got it. Some people like to think it's like triple option football, but it's not the case. The misdirection usually doesn't work. You gotta find the space offensively. There's a shot, rings the post and hits the foot of Kroom. And he's gonna pick it up. And here come the Highlanders. And another thing, uh, back to that two goalie system, a lot of these kids all play club club lacrosse. And in club lacrosse, you're going with the two goalie system typically all the time. So it's actually, it's not as common when you're in high school season, but it is actually extremely common uh, when you're on the club circuit. Yep, absolutely. For those of you that aren't familiar with the club scene, the older these guys get, the more looks the more important it can get. As we get an attempted shot up the hash and it's gonna go in. The jumper. Uh, jump shot going up the hash. Looked like it was Charlie Strahey. Yeah, carrying into the invert there. Um, excellent at execution. You see it here, the freshman drawing the slide and then attacking the backside. He takes advantage of that short stick on the low wing. And then with the jump shot, gets the high bouncer. But nifty footwork. You saw the stutter step working his way back up top, creating that space yeah. to even get his shot off. I thought that was the that was excellent. And right now, man, I tell you what, the Highlanders looking really good offensively here in this first quarter. Yeah. They do. Um, you know, I, Westlake lucking out there on an early violation, I think, but. You know, Presnell has done a really good job on maintaining possession for the Highlanders, but they look super deadly right now on offense. Yep. Shout out to Coach Anthony DeMeo. Conversations that we've had. Not to be confused with Towson Nick DeMeo. Anthony DeMeo, a product of Maryland. A student of the game under former offensive coordinator J.L. Reppert. Now the head coach of the College of Holy Cross. Certainly got some offensive stuff saved up for this final four game. As we get a uh, attempt to double there by the Woodlands. Ball's going to go on the deck and picked up. And it seems like the Woodlands are really the aggressive ones on defense, throwing out a lot of double teams. Yep, ride right back, pass out in front by Kalexis, set a shot and a goal. That feed by Kimo was unreal. It looked like Westlake relaxed a little bit. Nice check out of the ride, but it rolled right to Kaletsis, and he threw a laser out in front for another assist today. 
No, that's, these guys are doing a great job of sharing the rock. And, man, so you find right it. here, he drops his hands, shoots it, passes its sidearm around the defender, <laughs> and finds it wide open. Unreal. Sorry, we had that highlight hop No, up no, no. It's, it's all good. I mean, hey, man, you got a three-man booth. We expect <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it looks like there's going to be... Uh, the end of the you know, first you know, coming up. I thought it was a one-man wolf pack, and then I found Chris, and then I thought, could it be? Yeah, and, and now is we're, there a three-man we, wolf pack? Yeah. Are we going to get the wolf pack? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're the three best friends, right? So that there we go. Have, yeah, that yeah. anyone could have. Here we are. Here we are. Speaking of three best friends, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll laugh about this during the timeout. We'll be right back after this. to car shopping with Sewell because I know that the whole process is going to be seamless, comfortable, and we're going to be taken care of. Buying a car is a big life event. I just felt very relaxed through the whole process. They put us at ease. There wasn't any pressure. It really felt like we were sitting at home trying to buy a car, especially with the cookies. <laughs> I drive a Sewell. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. You've never been one to fear the unknown. That's because you've seen seasons like this come and go, just like many of your competitors. You know your outcome. Stay focused and take calculated risks, seizing opportunities when others freeze. The truth is, winter business cycles separate the good from the great. And winter is your season. Ours too. That's why for over a century, we've been honored to serve you. Vista Bank, entrepreneurs banking entrepreneurs since 1912. And we're back for the start of the second quarter. That first quarter brought to you by Tutor Doctor, tutoring one-on-one, -on -one, at home, online. They tutor all grades and subjects. They're local, and they customize every tutoring solution based on the needs of the student. The Tutor Doctor. The Tutor Doctor. I love it. That last goal also brought to you by State Farm, Agent Natalie Burkhalter. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Don't call Jake. Call Natalie. Discount double check. Yes, exactly. I think they should bring that back. I really think they should too. That was it. They had a really. You know what? I want to see somebody get a discount double check Selly after a goal. That actually would be pretty good. Not like the celebration that Cooper Rainey had in that last goal, but you know, yeah. a little bit of a different one. <laughs> yeah. You're number one. Holy moly. <laughs> yep. A little bit of some extracurriculars there. Westlake coming back. On offense, down the alley, shot's going to be saved by Kroom. Rebounds going towards the far sideline. And they're going to award the backup to the Chaps as they start to settle in here at the start of the second. The Woodlands up on the Chaps, 5-2. to two. Sweeping attempt to the middle of the field. Quick slide by the Highlanders. Ball's going to go on the deck. It's going to be picked up. Got a little help from the turf monster. Yeah, a little bit of the turf monster aiding in that strip. And Kaletsis trying to continue to keep the hot hand in transition, but the pass is going to be a little bit too tall for his teammate. We've seen some Aaron passes out here, but even superior goal play uh, all, all day, man. I don't know how much better this can get, but you see right now, I just, you know, posed a question about the goalie play. And you see the way that Kroom is playing. He's been excellent Ooh. here in this first half. And speaking of the stick work and the clear heck of a ride right there by the Woodlands. One-on-one -on -one shot with the goalie. Big and it's going to be saved. Wow. And it looks like Matt Silva, the junior, in between the pipes right now for the Chaps. Comes up with a big save in the one-on-one -on -one attempt. Weaving through traffic. Some uh, fancy dangles there. Yeah, we gauge. Had a, we had a toe drag and I think a swim. Yeah, frickin' Schmidt turning into the one man clear. Sometimes that happens. Some people like to think that clearing is clearing, but sometimes clearing can be stick work as well. well sometimes, and it's also just a, you know, punt return. Yeah, exactly. Well, punt return clear as they would call it. 
Oh, that Ooh. right there, Mr. Heckma, that's called the desk pop. That's straight, the desk pop, yep, the rear check. Yep, straight up in the air on the pass. Look like he got a lit. It looked like he got hit in the uh, in the ribs there too. Quick transition opportunity again. Colette's is trying to make something happen again. Pass goes wide, backed up by Westlake. Yeah, I mean he's slinging it. I mean, and if they're the right looks. They're just a little bit off right now. If he can dial in that accuracy, it's going to be some pretty goals here. Yeah, we got Brett Favre out there right now, throwing some lasers. <laughs> Colette's is. <laughs> I thought you were saying Favre. Like, Fabo. <laughs> Or Fabio, Fabio, yeah. <laughs> My goodness gracious. My hair's not that long, Chris. Come on. Uh, I know, it's okay. Another hair conversation. <laughs> Started by the only guy in the booth with hair. I know, it's amazing. amazing. What are you talking he does this. You guys have hair in your face. No, dude, you need a head and shoulders commercial. <laughs> Is that what you, if you're vying for it, we need to get it for you. For those of those those people in the booth right now, shot in a goal <laughs> by Wesley. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, scoring yeah, that yeah. shot right Thank there. Thank you for ending that conversation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gage Frickenschmidt, with a nice step down right there in the middle of the field. Oh, God. Yeah, and he goes five hole here. Yeah. And he spends that one right past. Yeah, nice job, the two-man action. But more importantly, what created this offense is just swinging it from side to side, flipping the field, and then Gage steps in right at top center and puts it home. Westlake chipping away at this Woodlands lead, now only down by two. You see that Freaking Smith is not just a facilitator, a scorer as well. So it's good to see. Yep, another senior headed to the University of Texas. That face off brought to you by 214 Lacrosse. As the Woodlands gets another 4v3 opportunity, pass down to the side. Crouch is going to elect to show some patience here. <clears throat> as he waits for the rest of his teammates to come through the midline. As we get Crouch again with the ball. And we got Coletsis. Nice little up pick action. Yep. Solid step out right there. Hunter Kern matching up with Coletsis. Oh, he went fishing on the overhead oh. check. Coletsis swinging up oh. in front. Shot wide. Oh, that's so that's sick. That's a tough yeah, one. Coach Burks probably not going to be happy about yep, that one. That is a tough one right there. The over the head, trailing someone, usually not the best. Well, there's a time and place to do that. Ooh, nice save. Yep. Shot out in front by Starkey. You know, if you're in between the lines, like we saw, unfortunately, uh, Elfison get hurt on it, but he, that's the correct time. If you're in between the lines, you could throw that because it's you still got to get to a scoring opportunity. You're farther away. Your teammates can help recover if you don't miss it because it's going to be a home run check. It's all or nothing. And if you throw that right at GLE, and if you don't land it, it typically is pretty costly and leads to a goal. Yep. And there's going to be a timeout by Coach Burke. He's going to talk some things over with his offense. They're taking a break. We're going to do the same. And we're going to be right back here after this. I'll sit down, have a cup of a cappuccino, a cookie, read a book. When the car is ready, they come get me. It's a great way to start a Saturday. Discover our wide variety of new and L-certified vehicles at our Dallas and Fort Worth Sewell Lexus locations. You've never been one to fear the unknown. That's because you've seen seasons like this come and go, just like many of your competitors. You know your outcome. Stay focused and take calculated risks, seizing opportunities when others freeze. The truth is, winter business cycles separate the good from the great. And winter is your season. Ours too. That's why for over a century, we've been honored to serve you. Vista Bank, entrepreneurs banking entrepreneurs since 1912. All right, and we're back. As we can see, Coach Burke talking it over with his guys. And Heckman, what do you think he's talking about here? Yeah, Coach Burke is probably telling these guys, look, we are leading by two. We got to figure out a way, you know, excuse me, down by, we're down by two. Got to figure out a way to get it going offensively. We know how explosive Westlake is on offense. Right now, it just hadn't been shown. And I don't think that the Woodlands have been doing anything defensively to, to stymie that. It's just that they haven't been able to get in any rhythm. And it looked like, 
you know, he was probably talking to some of the offensive guys just by some of his hands gestures. And I think he was just talking to them about their stick placement, getting your stick up, you know, in that, you know, box area, you know, that triple threat section and getting your instead of having your sticks on the off on your hip uh, when you're off ball. The old Jamie Monroe two hands pantomime for those of you yeah, yeah. <laughs> that might have known that. <laughs> but uh, as they come out of this timeout here, they're going to elect to give it to the senior freaking Schmidt. And he's going to start the offense here. Gonna well, be he certainly has the hot hand 100%. for the uh, chaps. Yeah, we got Starkey to come out and cover him. They get a little short to short. Pick elects not to use it. Oh, that pass. Unfortunately, his teammate was a bit of a snatcher yep, there. Snatching at the ball. Usually ends up rolling out of bounds, and it does. And Kroom with a nice clearing pass right there in the middle of the field. Another transition opportunity. Here comes the Woodlands pass out in front. <laughs> Colette's is cutting through the middle, but it's deflected. And picked up by Westlake. Nice job getting the stick in the lane on that one. Colette's is riding it back right now. Wow. What an effort right there by the sophomore. That's all on Colette's. It That hustle and his aggressiveness to get that. Pass that front and a goal. There it is. And Woodland's adding to the lead. Oh, no. And they're waving it off. Never mind. Looks like he landed in the goal mouth. And Westlake is right on the attack right away. That was huge for Westlake, getting that one back. Yep, absolutely. Coletzis on that attempt. Quick quick dodge opportunity right there, too. Looked like it was Strahley again. And Westlake trying to settle in here and continue to try to chip away with just under seven minutes left here in the second quarter. And I want to correct something I said it hadn't, and I said it wasn't because of the Woodlands defense that was, you know, basically stopping uh, Westlake. That's not true because they've been, their slide and their double team has been really good uh, the way that these guys have been working together. So you saw Westlake almost get away with one. Uh, you know, you had Starkey matched up there and he dropped in. He was guarding oh, Grady man, Barley. Wow. Look at that pass right out in front. Looked like had a couple, too many guys, too many guys heading towards that ball right there. Woodlands capitalized. Well, you saw Woodlands. I mean, what I was saying before that goal happened was they were switching from a man into a zone. Westlake almost capitalized. They, they flipped it on the backside here and did a great job finding that seam. And he's wide open. Kroom wasn't able to get back to that far pipe to get set up. And, Coach, I thought that was awkward the way you're talking about on the switch when he turned his back, basically. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. I saw that. I thought that was pretty weird. Instead of the slide, he turns his back to run back into the zone. So, And, and that's just because they were set up in man, and then they were trying to adjust into a zone defense. And that replay brought to you by Iron Horse Lacrosse, serving the Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and Austin areas. As the Woodlands gets it back on offense, Westlake has taken it to a one goal game, but the Woodlands has the ball. Jack O'Rourke behind the cage, surveying. Quick slide comes. O'Rourke still with it. Back out in front, over to Coletzis. And the sophomore surveying, elects to give it up. Some stagnant survey and movement by the Woodlands, but they're starting to move off ball here. Back down behind. Got a hung situation right now. That means the defender is above the goal, but he elects to attack it. And shout out to our mic crew. We're picking up a lot of sound bites from the field, and you heard a couple terminologies thrown out there. Diamond, that was a defensive pass out in front. Ooh, Ooh. and it's going to be dropped. A defensive formation to guard against an invert. And then you also had RICO, which is an acronym they typically use for recovering. And there's the guy we've seen before. Oh, oh wow. Pirouette lands in the crease. It's going to go back over to the Woodlands. But there's the guy that we've talked about before. They're Caden Frank, the sophomore, for the Chaps. And I think he's probably the best long pole in transit transition offensively we've seen uh, today. O'Rourke down to his teammate. Ooh, slip pass, almost connected on that one. Coletzis had the handle. And Kimo's just a sophomore, but you see him directing traffic out there, getting guys in position. 
Yep, and we've seen that all year out of the sophomore. Solid conversation with Coach DeMeo, too, about his leadership style and also his IQ. So and it certainly helps growing up in Long Island and then moving down yes. here, uh, you know, playing at that really high level uh, at, from a very young age. Absolutely. And we'll be, we'll be looking to potentially see where he ends up committing after this big summer of recruiting coming up. The rising junior year, the rising junior summer, as they say, is a big opportunity. And certainly Coletzis is going to be on that circuit. But if you're 24, don't panic. This is also a big summer for a lot of those juniors. Yep, absolutely. It's never too late. Just remember that. Plenty of opportunities to play at every level. Two man behind the cage. Back down to X. Westlake cutting to the feeder. Step down, sweep into the middle shot, and it's going to go wide, but still backed up. Almost through that uh, slid dink. Yeah, almost hit that pipe. Looking for Bradley Mays. Hadn't been very aggressive in this contest, but boy, he's one of those guys that you know can get his offense out off <laughs> at any point. Nifty pickup, but shot deflected right there. I mean, look at, I mean, I, I got to give credit to Elijah Porter there, just selling out and soaking that shot. Absolutely. Coming right out there, getting his body in front Ooh. of it. Ooh, what happened there? I don't know. It looks like there's going to be a player down for the Chaps. I think he... And I'm not sure if the referees have seen it yet. Nope. Oh. And now they have. And there's going to be yep, a training, training staff coming out. Going to tend to this player that's down. Yep, it looks like there might be some cramping going on here. So it doesn't look like hopefully it's anything too serious. Yep, and he's right back on his feet. Been it then. It's like they'll come over here and help me. I can get up on my own. <laughs> I like the energy. After he goes down, I'm, I'm like, God, this guy's going to make it out of this field. And he jumps right back up. That is awesome. Yeah, Bennett Zinn was the player down. Looks like he's okay, which is good news. I think for any parent out here, you just want to see a thumbs up. Yep. You're good. All right. But even better, just hop up on your feet and run off. Absolutely. But again, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're Coach DeMeo. And there's some conversation, because I wasn't sure if there was some contact there off ball or it was a cramp, and I think that's what the officials are discussing right now. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of a scrum at, at the you know, front of the cage, but it didn't look like anything malicious. Yeah, not really sure if we had anything on the replay, but I don't think we do. As we come back, and if you're Coach DeMayo, you got to be happy with the play of Elijah Porter on that last one, just using and sacrificing the body. That was very impressive right there by the senior. As we have a, another successful clear by the Woodlands, stick work looks very sharp within that. And there's going to be a timeout by Coach DeMayo. They're taking a timeout, we're taking a timeout, and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. back this timeout also brought to you by c2 education available in person before and after the game for more information as we come out of this timeout 
and the conversation again, Dalton, that we had with Coach DeMeo over the phone, you got to be very impressed with a young man like that. He's obviously been in these types of situations as a player at Maryland. You know, a guy that goes from a Final Four and right into a National Championship Memorial Day weekend has five points. You got to think that a lot of these guys are probably looking to him from that leadership standpoint and just being in big moments. Certainly, he has. Certainly, and he has the advantage uh, to kind of lean on that youth and relate to those players. Um, you know, being a younger coach and you know playing the game not that long ago certainly is a huge advantage for him. Yep, a little pass towards the hip of Kaletsis. It's a lot better than having a coach well past his prime trying to tell you what he did back in his day, right? Absolutely. And it was real to real like when I played. So <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's, just not, it's more relatable, I'm sure. It works for his players, and you see the energy that they play with as well. Absolutely. This is a shot wide, backed up by the Woodlands. And we had Luke Dana with the take. Picked up by Sloan Walker-Stewart. He's going to kick it back up top. Ridge Crouch with the attempt, or excuse me, that's Starkey. Crouch is on the inside, number seven. Another dodge down the side by O'Rourke. O'Rourke down through X. Colette's is clearing through the inside. Shot's going to go in just over the shoulder of Matt Silva. Nice display of passing right there by the Highlander offense. And they continue to add to this lead, and they take it to 6-4. Yeah, a lot of patience, just getting it through X, and then Dana does an excellent job attacking that shorty, driving up the hashes. Unfortunately, Silva, you know, kind of bites on that a little bit. You saw his hands drop, and that's why he's able to beat him high to high. And you see how fast he exploded on that hash mark. It was like he was already looking for that shot once he got topside and was able to fire that back, and that's a great job. So far, again, we've been talking about this offensive display by uh, Westlake, but the Woodlands, man, it, their stick work has been impeccable defensively, but also, you know, they got the hot head now on offense. Yeah, agreed. As there's a nest dodge underneath shot, and it's going to go in. What are they going to say? The refs are talking through it. That's probably going to be a good goal, and it... Wait for it. I don't know, Jim. I don't know, Wait Jim. Wait for it. No, oh, no, they're waving how? it off. Yeah, it looked like. Oh, man. Not going to give it to him. Not going to give it to him. That was a pretty display on the dive, though. That was so close, man. You got to look at that replay to see. He was, he was walking the chalk. And then a great, great defensive play there by Elijah Porter. Getting his stick in the passing lane. Able to knock down that pass. Woodlands gets the ball back. Yep, and we'll definitely take a look at that replay here. And a lot of the stuff within the shot clock rules. There's also the goal mouth rule at the next level. There's an arc. It kind of looks like a smiley face inside the crease. If you land in that, regardless of the ball going in, they'll usually take it away from you. As we get some operation behind the goal. Unlike box lacrosse. Unlike box lacrosse. We got Stockton Stewart with it. And the Woodlands continuing to show some serious poise here. There's just over a minute 20 in the first half as that shot goes wide. And there's going to be another timeout called by the Woodlands. And here we go with that replay brought to you by Iron Horse. Beautiful S dodge Ooh. by Kimo. Uh, yeah. And just utilizing that speed to beat that defenseman. Yeah, we're going to have to rewind that. we got to look at that real quick. I mean, he leaves his feet. But again, just like we're talking about, he's going away from the crease. He's going away from the goal mouth. He's going east-west, but where does he land? Oh, ah, it looks yeah, like his foot I was on it. I think that foot yeah. might have touched the line. Yep, I agree. Because right there, he's landing, he's landing, he's landing, he's going away, and the oh. goal mouth is nowhere near that. So must have been a foot on the line or something. So Yeah, I think his foot was on the line as he was taking off. Uh, Pretty good air time, though. Yeah, but again, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, really that, that good was a time. solid, solid Superman there. So if you go east-west or if you go if you go east-west and you land and you land in the goal mouth, it's not a goal. I'm feeling these uh, chrome domes. Yeah, looks pretty good here. The woods. <laughs> Got hey, they got a new several. tagline, huh? Yeah. They, they, got, they have several, and I was just praying that they didn't wear the green unis with the orange and green numbers. <laughs> so that was going to make for yeah. a bad broadcast was, had they done that, but I'll go for this look. I going to have to get my binoculars out <laughs> Yeah, try to figure out who was who. As we're coming out of this timeout, and shocker, Coach DeMeo going with Coach Kaletsis. 
or Coach Tomeo going with Kimo Kaletsis, my apologies. <laughs> As he comes out on that initiation, Big Little from the tangent, step in shot, saved by Silva. The junior standing in the pipes as there's just over a minute Ooh, left here stick. in the first. God. The one-man clear going on right now by the Chaps. He's clearly a football player. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Huh? Especially after that one. Yeah, he, he plays football. <laughs> yeah, he's a, yeah, he's that, a starting uh, DN. Of for, course uh, he is. And there it is. <laughs> Did you see how he just ran through that guy at the midline? Yeah. I mean, come on. And we got to the center of the shrubbery maze on that one. <laughs> Only a football player could run through you without a mind. Yeah. Like, they just, ah, I'm going right through your chest. And sometimes you just need a big guy in the clear. Doesn't matter if he's holding a pole or a short stick. Big guy or a buddy guy. Or a buddy guy. I'm not I'm your not buddy, friend. <laughs> yep, and here we go. As the Woodlands gets that ball back. And Coach DeMeo, I believe, is out of timeout. So there's just under... 11 seconds left in this first half. Pass out in front, <laughs> shot, and it goes in. What a pass. And a goal for the Highlanders. Rich Crouch should be ashamed of himself for that pass. What? <laughs> that was so sick. Oh, that man. That was a heck of a look Yeah, right there. so, I mean, Cooper Starkey just having a day. The senior that's going to No, LR that's three. I'm sorry. Not dishes seven. Dishes it there to yep. Sloan Walker and a beautiful shot, too, with the off-stick hip. Keeping that stick protected. Two seconds left in the half. Woodland's up by three. This faceoff brought to you by 214 Lacrosse. And that's going to do it here for the first half. And we are going to take a quick break. And, oh, but before we do, let's take a look at that feed on the inside. The Starkey, I mean, just the way that he comes turns right back with the pass. Yeah, he, he draws actually two defenders, and Sloan Walker does an incredible job recognizing his man leaving to go help, and he has the shallow cut, and he does a great job calling for that ball with a stick up. Sloan Walker's having a sneaky good game, by the way. Yep, absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with a quick first half recap after a word from our sponsors. I love the idea that when you pull into the service garage, your name comes up on the screen. I will always drive a soul. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at our Dallas and Fort Worth Sewell Infinity locations. Sit down, have a cup of cappuccino, a cookie, read a book. When the car is ready, they come get me. It's a great way to start a Saturday. Discover our wide variety of new and L-certified vehicles at our Dallas and Fort Worth Sewell Lexus locations.
You've never been one to fear the unknown. That's because you've seen seasons like this come and go, just like many of your competitors. You know your outcome, stay focused, and take calculated risks, seizing opportunities when others freeze. The truth is, winter business cycles separate the good from the great, and winter is your season. Ours too. That's why for over a century, we've been honored to serve you. Vista Bank, entrepreneurs banking entrepreneurs since 1912. I actually look forward to car shopping with Sewell because I know that the whole process is going to be seamless, comfortable, and we're going to be taken care of. Buying a car is a big life event. I just felt very relaxed through the whole process. They put us at ease. There wasn't any pressure. It really felt like we were sitting at home trying to buy a car, especially with the cookies. <laughs> I drive a Sewell. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. I put a lot of mileage on my car. So I am practically at Sewell every three months. Every single time that I go, it's amazing. Everybody is welcoming, everybody is professional, everybody is kind. It's just like easy, fast, right to the point. You're in, you're out. Cannot imagine being with anybody else but Sewell. Their customer service is absolutely flawless. I drive a Sewell. Discover our wide variety of new and L-certified vehicles at our Dallas and Fort Worth Sewell Lexus locations. Heron, Heckma Harrison, Dalton Jernigan, and Dalton, I mean, talking about that uh, Woodlands offense, I mean, what, what do you got for us? I, I think certainly this is the most skilled offensive players we've seen so far this weekend, um, certainly in terms of their creativity, but probably the best off-ball play we've seen all weekend. They're very deliberate, and they're moving with a purpose. With Westlake, you know, I think their offense is struggling a little bit. They're running into trouble. They need to generate more slides and then move it and flip the field and get their hands free. We're seeing them, like, beating a guy but then running themselves into trouble. And I think the one thing that's probably going to help Westlake is them on defense. We haven't seen that from them in this first half. We know that they, they have a bunch of guys on defense that can, you know, just bring the slide. They can get those failure to clears, all of those things, you know, for Westlake right now, getting back to, to that on defense, I think is going to save these guys. Uh, but also, when you flip over to the other side for, the, for Woodlands, I think their creativity on offense and the way that they're designing their plays is really kind of what's sticking out to me because no one expected the Woodlands to come out and play above and beyond where they are right now. And so I'm sure for Coach Burke, he has those guys on the sidelines saying, okay, look, these guys getting close. I want you to knock some guys off with their feet because he know he, he has those football players with football mentality on the other side, and the physicality just didn't show up in the first half. Yeah, and I mean, for me, it's, it's iron sharpens iron. Like, if they're going to if they're gonna come out of this half defensively and be aggressive, it's the same thing for the Woodlands again going offensively. And you hit the nail on the head. It's movement with a purpose. You're not just moving just for moving sake. They're trying to get guys open, and they're letting guys like Kaletsis move it with confidence. I mean, you saw that massive skip pass that he threw in transition that went right on the ear of Crouch for the for the layup. So, I mean, I'm I'm definitely looking for Coach DeMeo to let these guys just play. Now, do you give DeMeo the credit that for me for that first half because it just looked like his team was a lot more prepared for this moment? I am I am a little bit. Well, and I, and I think you know credit to Coach DeMeo. We've just seen him just really improve a ton as a young coach from the first game we called with the Woodlands um, versus Highland Park. You know, one of his first big games to now and how much he's improved these guys and prepared them has been super, super impressive. Yep. And I think for Westlake offensively, you know, transition, especially if the ball's in Caden Frank, push it. But if not, like, you just can't go and run and gun because this Westlake, the Woodlands, sorry, offense is just too skilled. And I don't think what Westlake wants to get in a run and gun battle with them, you know. And then one of the things, he's got to get Bessett going. I mean, he's been pretty quiet today, and he's their, you know, their sole high uh, high point commit. Yep. And let's let's take a look at some of these first half highlights. Again, this halftime recap brought to you by Firehouse Subs. Yeah, and you just see like right there the execution, the skill, like the subtle little movements, like the pump fakes that froze that goalie, um, but. You know, excellent job on the off-ball play there by Brad Mays. You know, once again, just utilizing those fakes, you know, Sloan with the, the, the hitch and then the off-ball movement by Cooper Starkey. 
And again, in transition, there's Rich Crouch, like we talked about, just knifing through the middle, finding the open spots, the deliberate off-ball purposeful movement right there. Yeah, and that's where the Woodlands is really excelling. They draw the slide, and then they're flipping the field so they can attack the weak side. Yep, and then again, there's Coletzis with that nice skip pass right in front. I mean, that that's this that's creative stuff. That's just letting guys be the guy right there. And again, within transition, you know, goaltenders coming up big in, in certain moments for sure. And again, you know, the opportunistic off-ball movement within the dodging and then getting the ball back into space. I mean, that's the same type of stuff. Like, that's the Westlake that I know that we've seen. And I, I'm interested to see, you know, how they do when they come back. And again, you know, going back to the creativity of, of the sophomore, Coletzis, here it is, Mr. Superman on this one. This one got called back. But I again, don't know about that one, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go back and look <laughs> at was, that one again. It that was, was still close. tough. Yep, that's where, that's where it gets dicey. I mean, we're, you know, going back, and here it is. They call this an S dodge, making a letter S, getting back underneath, attacking the hands of the defender. And it certainly was close. I think his foot might have been in, on the line. Unfortunately, this is not professional lacrosse, so yep. no challenge flags for the coaches. Yeah, and that replay right there brought to you by Iron Horse. But we're going to take a quick minute break, and we'll be right back with the start of the second half after this. I love the idea that when you pull into the service garage, your name comes up on the screen. I will always drive a soul. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at our Dallas and Fort Worth Sewell Infinity locations. Back here for the start of the second half. The second half starting face-off brought to you by 214 Lacrosse. And there's Fancy a footwork. Solid kick right there. And just like we talked about, the two goalie system. Christian Clinton, the Roanoke College commit, in between the pipes for the Woodlands to start the second half. But again, I thought it was a pretty solid job by Kroom in there. Yeah, he had a very good first half. That's what that's why I feel like it's so difficult to commit to the two-goalie system, especially when you have a guy that was playing like Steel Kroom. And that's why I asked you guys about it, because yeah. I felt like, look, if I'm going to ride the hot hand of the guy that's giving me all that he can, just hypothetically, if something happened with Clinton, you know, gives up a few goals, how tempted are you to go back to the guy before? Oh, so. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be Absolutely, a short yeah. leash. I mean, it's, it's a hard, hard, hard hot hand to play sometimes. So I don't want to be that second guy. Let me be the first. <laughs> you're you're going to take the beach is yeah, what you're saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. As we settle into this start of this second half, Westlake with their first look on offense. Rebound shot, and it goes in off the rebound. Picking out the rebound. Ty. Ingram Eisner. I think that goes to everything that you were just talking about at halftime, Dalton, when you're saying that, look, offensively, we know how explosive these guys can be. We just need to see more of it. And when you get a quick opportunity like that. Yeah, I mean, it was a decent dodge. Unfortunately, that rebound, he didn't save it with his stick. And he did a good job of continuing to crash the boards. And it makes it an easy goal. Yep, that replay brought to you by Groovy Hughes. As we get present all digging in again. Woodland's wing play have been pretty solid so far during this game. A little overhead And that's check. where you throw an overhead Right check. there. There you go. Caden Frank, the sophomore for the Chaps, just like Coach Burke has said, he definitely thinks he's one of the best defensive players on this unit. Certainly so, the most skilled in generating offense, too, out of all the long sticks. Sometimes up in Canada they call them big sticks. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah there you go, yeah. You're just playing in the <laughs> in the stickers. indoors. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, come here. Put down that stick. A shot rings the post. An attempt right there on the hash. 
About a 12-yard step down right there. And for both of these teams, they've beaten some pretty formidable opponents. I mean, for Westlake coming in to defeat Jesuit, 7-11, and also on the other side for the Woodlands, uh, beating St. Mark's. Yep. Low angle inside roll shot and saved. Oh, Talk look. about the physicality. <laughs> Things have changed, boy, for <laughs> halftime. There it goes. Team showing that they don't want to end their season. Who's going to make it the championship Sunday? As the Woodlands gets this ball over the midline. Ball's going to bounce. Loose ball action. Yeah, they're yep. going to call that push. Yep. And there it was. Gosh. Trying not to get ahead of the refs here right now. <laughs> that was a deep cleater by number 14, Carter Simple. Yeah, that's where it gets a little bit tough. If you see his back, try yep. not to touch him. Do not touch the back. Do not touch the back. Kaletsis going through the middle to his left. Bounces back out. Shot is going to deflect off the foot of a Westlake defender. Thought we saw Ben Abel out there playing the field with a kick save. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Kaletsis is going to pick up his own rebound and slow this Woodlands offense down. His version of off the hizzy. Kimo <laughs> <laughs> Kaletsis is really just playing at a Pass different speed. Inside the crowd shot over the cage. Oh, man. Unfortunately, I think Ridge didn't think he had as much time as he did. He probably had a little bit more time inside. Going back to the last point like you were talking about, rocking the baby on that one. <laughs> Westlake defense falling asleep a little bit on the inside. Crouch just over the net on that attempt. I should have never used that analogy. You guys are not going to let me live that I, one down. No, but I mean, it was good. <laughs> it, it was good. It was just, you know, it was two guys that don't have kids. Yeah, I, don't, you know, right. I, <laughs> I have a niece. I, you know, <laughs> the most unrelatable analogy <laughs> I could use. Yeah. I mean, I got a couple friends who got kids who just <laughs> complain all the time. They never get to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And don't worry, I know my sister's listening to the broadcast. Haley, I didn't forget about Seamus. I'm just saying, you know, I didn't really <laughs> rock Seamus as much as I did Liberty. So shout out to COVID. Spending more time with the family during that as the Woodlands now, rides it back. Now, was that all manual or did you have like a legit rocking chair? I had, no, I had like the baby carrier, like Galifianakis in the hangover. It was great. I just oh, walked God. around the living room and she fell right asleep. It was phenomenal. So, but that, a, I mean, a little bit of experience right there. Found so. a baby with a coffee bean? <laughs> 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 My goodness. My goodness. Um, we got Starkey going down the lefty alley <laughs> past the inside. Tripping is O'Rourke. Shoots just over the goal. Yeah, unfortunately there, you know, that ball I think slipped up into the top top of the stick, and that's why you saw that just kind of skyrocket. Yep, kind of missed the handle on a little bit. Solid off-ball cut there by O'Rourke. We got Starkey coming up the lefty hash, getting to the island. Oh, Question he, mark shot saved. Starkey loves that shot, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Yep. And that is the question mark move for those of you that are playing the home game, watching at home. And it's a great opportunity because he's dodging to his weak hand, but by utilizing that question mark move, and he was just a little too wide there. It allows you to shoot with your strong hand on the weak side of the field. Yep. Punch your stick to the sideline. Keep it protected from the reaching defender. Come back. Snap it over the shoulder. And paint the post, as they say. Just, just like a paintbrush. Up and down. So we get Westlake back on offense. Sweeping attempt. Pass to the wing. Just missed a handle on it. Back over to the righty alley. Quick show by the Woodlands on the inside. Pass oh, the inside oh, shot in front whoa. and a goal. Oh, Nifty man. display of passing and utilizing that weave. It's Gage freaking Schmidt. Yeah, freaking Schmidt. Here's the replay. You talk about freaking Schmidt. Look at this fancy footwork. Whoop, back inside. And then he decides to pass. Yep. Yeah. Good body oh, bounce and man. go. Draws that defenseman, <laughs> dishes it to the inside. Excellent job by Bessett, you know, finding that soft spot and recognizing his defenseman leaving to go help on that slide. Yep. Caught the defender in a show in that last replay. You saw the defender leading off into space. The body bounce lets that defender snap back. But again, at a bad slide angle on the redodge, allows the open or the open player in the middle of the field. As here comes the Woodlands, trying to continue to re respond, and there's going to be a push. That's going to be a flag and, and a good goal. So you're going to call that like an and one. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and lacrosse. Exactly right you are. 
the penalty and score. Yep, missed we, we got and ones and off the hizzies today. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And here it is again, this replay brought to you by Iron Horse. Yep, right in the back, reaches around. I said it, man. Sloan Walker having a quad, a quad, a sneaky good game. It's not sneaky anymore. <laughs> no, I think no, everybody no. knows yeah. he's having a good game. Yeah, not, yeah, not after that one. The senior's really selling out here. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's certainly trying to continue to extend his season in do or die time as our second semifinal game here of the day. Winner of this game is going to meet the Scots of Highland Park in the state title game tomorrow. That, that game's going to be at 2.30 here at Game On Sports Network. As that ride back. Yeah, it's going to be a packed. It's going to be a packed house for that game. Yep, so, and here comes Elijah Porter with the ball. And again, I mean, it's clear that the Woodlands is sharp with their stick work. Doing a very solid job clearing the ball today. As there's just under six minutes here in the third as the shot goes high. Yeah, that's a tough one. Anytime you're that far outside the hashes going down the alley, the deeper you get in your dodge, the more you're decreasing your shooting angle. Stockton Stewart with the ball. They put the short stick on him today. Quick slide here as he swings it up to Kaletsis. He spins it over to the other side, flipping the field. And back over to Kaletsis. He surveys from up top, swings it over to Sloan Walker Stewart. Lefty look, down to X. Attacking the approaching defender, passing the inside, shot and a goal. There it is. Impressive goal by the freshman. And also tucking that stick and using his back as a shield to protect that so he can get the shot off. Yep. Stockton Stewart with the finish on that one. But just the patience from that pass. Again, being inside, looking for the correct shot. Can't ask for much more there from Stockton. No, not at all. I mean, again, and that's what we talked about at, at, the, at the recap of this first half, the deliberate off-ball movement, and they're taking advantage. That's in a perfect example of follow the slide, right? They're flipping the field. Everybody on defense turns their head. And the freshman capitalizes because he follows the slide from the inside. Ooh, errant pass right there. Looking for another transitional opportunity. But it's going to go back to Westlake. As the Woodlands sitting here 9-6 to six over the chaps of Westlake here in the third. Wide open clearing pass. Oh, you had the skip yeah, across. He did. Elected to pull it down and Calm it down. As it's swung back over to Gage Frickenschmidt. He's going to swing it over to his teammate. But he wants the ball back. I don't know. I'm just waiting on the explosion on offense from Westlake. We've seen them come in, in spots here. You know, put those points coming in bunches a few times throughout this contest. But we know how efficient these guys on, are on offense. Westlake's, excuse me, the Woodlands just doing a good job of holding them off. Yeah, Westlake is drawn to right there. Attacking the approach, knife into the middle of the field, shot and a goal over the shoulder of Clinton. I think he threw it a little leaner, actually, yeah. in there. Yep. Yeah. Nice little fake. Let's take a look at the replay on that goal. Let's see if yeah, it so is a leaner here. Does a good job of attacking the middle of the field. Looks like maybe some confusion. Yep, he throws in that little head fake. He drops it down low, sticks it high. That's what we call a leaner. Um, and that really gets the goalie to bite on it. Yep, faking the low, punching the hands high, right over the shoulder of Clinton. That last goal brought to you by State Farm, agent Natalie Burkhalter and her agency here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. As Presnall won the faceoff. Looked like he came up limping on that one. Presnall upset with himself about that shot. Yep, and the Woodland's doing an excellent job getting back to stop transition. And here we go as the Chaps give the ball back to their offense after that attempted transition shot by Presnell. And it looks like uh, 
Sloan Walker might have got caught up in the midfield. Yeah, as we get oh, triple team split, shot saved. I'm surprised they didn't try to pull him out and go after that. Yeah. That is Clinton doing a spectacular job in the clear. That right there is that a – that's a college commit goalie pass right there. That is very nice. Hey, getting the transition started. Yep. And interestingly enough, I thought that was going to be a push with possession, but – Well, so did the fans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually siding with him on that one. So a, a lot of palms up down there. Yeah, it looked like he had it in his stick. I'm not sure. But either way, ball still stays with the Woodlands. And Coletsis is going to look to ignite the fire here on offense as he sweeps nice to his left off pick. the pick. Coming down the lefty alley, back down to Crouch. Crouch over to the side. He gets it back from X. He's going up. Pass to the wing. Step in shot and a save. Big save. Nice save right there by Silva. Now, both of you have been so complimentary of Coach DeMaio and the way that his team has come out here and performed. At a certain degree, does a team ever, not say that you turn back into who you are, but they're playing error-free right now off offensively. Uh, does Westlake ever get into a situation where they're like, hey, these guys can't continue this for four quarters because now – Towards the end of the third quarter, they're continuing this effort. Well, you got to keep the pressure on. You don't want to get complacent and let the, you know, the gas. You, you want to keep your foot down. We saw that last game. Yeah. You know, you don't want to give up an eight goal run. So they got to continue the pressure, which they've done a good job. Yep. In that mode of like just playing to win, right? right. And playing not to lose, right? You, you just you keep going. Playing the hot hand. Speaking of hot hands right there, there's another goal by the Chaps as they cut into this lead. And it seems like they're having a lot of success going high against uh, Clinton. Yep, and that was Brad Mays, the senior, in this replay brought to you by Groovy Hughes. Yep, great job down below, just kind of recognizing good off-ball cut by Brad Mays and getting that shot off before Elijah Porter could get a stick in his gloves. Yep, solid yep. stick work, soft hands right there. Big shot by Brad Mays, a kid that's not missing leg day at all. <laughs> um, it just... <laughs> unit. Well, I don't think the West Westlake football program allows you to do that. No, I don't think they would, especially down there. Isn't that the home of Drew Brees? Isn't that where he played quarterback? Yes, it is. Yeah, there you go. Coach Coach Dodge. I'm not sure if Coach Dodge is still the head coach down there, but I remember Coach Dodge from the. Uh, we were recruiting a couple of guys from from that program from the lacrosse end to Michigan. I remember Coach Dodge. Mentioned some things. Oh. There's a shot and a goal oh, and right one. there. Oh, and that's going to be. I think that was Sloan Walker Stewart again, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Yeah. With the slid dink. Yep. Taking that top shelf. This is so sick. <laughs> this is so sick, guys. Yeah, great job. You. Yep. Getting that slide. He's got that signature hitch. Throws yep. that slid dink. That sidearm bouncer outside the crease, which it allows it to go in that top corner. Yep. Call that a hitch and go. Selling the shot. The defender froze. Swept it right to the middle. Beautiful display of opportunistic off ball dodging. As we dig in for the faceoff here, brought to you by 214 Lacrosse. And one of the most impressive things this entire game is, you know, Woodlands has had the lead. Every time Westlake starts to get life yeah. or cut that lead, the Woodlands has answered every single time. And Westlake continuing to still fight back in this game. As there's the strip by the Woodlands. Tough ground ball here towards the middle of the field. Oh, and it looks like the refs are going to give it back to the Chaps. Some off ball interference right there. Off the ground ball. Once again, can't push somebody from behind. If you see the back, don't touch the back. Here comes yeah. Gage freaking Schmidt. Shot's going to go high and backed up by the chaps. Yeah. Buddy Eccles, look out. <laughs> Ball was coming right at you. <laughs> Two man from the wing. The Woodlands certainly settling in on defense here in this second half. Just over 30 seconds left in the third. You've got to get someone on number 11. I'll pass out in front and a goal. God. And that right there, Brad Mays. Another beautiful 
Another ball, ball play by Brad Mays. Yep. Let's take a look at this replay brought to you by Iron Horse. Yeah, Gage doing a good job, just kind of being patient, finding Gage who's cutting from behind and is able to put that one in the back of the net. And Gage is almost like hypnotizing this defense. They're just watching him for every move that he makes. It makes that really easy for him to facilitate that pass and, and score. Well, he does a really good job of dodging with his head up, not down. And that allows him to really execute on it with his vision. Yeah, it looks like they had a defender from the Woodlands leave the restraining box early off that faceoff. Just like Coach Jernigan mentioned in the first broadcast, we had the same situation. Can't leave that box until somebody maintains possession. If it rolls past that restraining line, you can play. You just can't leave until it either crosses the line or somebody in the 3v3 gets the ball. That's why they elected to give it to the Chaps. And here they come in offense. Shot was winding down towards the third. That's going to do it for the third. Both teams are going to take a break, talk things over. We're going to talk things over here in the booth while our sponsors talk for us. car shopping with Sewell because I know that the whole process is going to be seamless, comfortable, and we're going to be taken care of. Buying a car is a big life event. I just felt very relaxed through the whole process. They put us at ease. There wasn't any pressure. It really felt like we were sitting at home trying to buy a car, especially with the cookies. <laughs> I drive a Sewell. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. You've never been one to fear the unknown. That's because you've seen seasons like this come and go, just like many of your competitors. You know your outcome. Stay focused and take calculated risks, seizing opportunities when others freeze. The truth is, winter business cycles separate the good from the great. And winter is your season. Ours too. That's why for over a century, we've been honored to serve you. Vista Bank, entrepreneurs banking entrepreneurs since 1912. And we're back here for the start of the fourth. We've gone through three. And again, it looks like the Woodlands has had a solid display. But Westlake fighting back. It's only a one-goal game, guys. Yeah, I think Westlake has really been able to chip away based on their off-ball offense. I think they've caught the Woodlands sleeping a little bit defensively off-ball. Yeah, there's a violation by Presnell, his first well, Coach, I'm, I'm going to steal something that you said. Every time Westlake scores, the Woodlands finds an answer. And so that's been the story of this game, that the, every time Westlake gets a response going, the Woodlands responds immediately, no matter what their defense is in. Offensively, they're keeping it going. Yep, couldn't agree more. And they get oh, 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 oh. oh, oh yeah, just right on, the line. on it. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh that's going to be a flag. No, no. Yep. Oh, uh, 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 I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Woodland's he... faithful certainly wanting the delay call. <laughs> that definitely was delay. That I, was think, a, I think uh, the zebras were being a little yeah, nice there. That was he, a, like, you know what you did. Don't do that again. He accepted the apology. Uh, yeah. As we, <laughs> yep. I think it was like, uh, okay, you're just being a high school boy. Yep. Didn't make the smartest <laughs> uh, decision there. Starkey weaves through the double team on that clear. He gets it back. Looks like he's going to elect to invert it here. The Woodlands in a jet set. Movement off ball. Pass to the inside. Goes wide. Heading towards the midline. Elijah Porter trying to keep it on the offensive end, but it's going to be over and back. And we'll see. We'll see if Westlake can tie this one up here. Yeah, only down by a point. This is uh, a lot closer than we thought from the end of the third to the fourth. Yep. And uh, right you are there, Mr. Heckma, as the shot is saved by Clinton. 
And it's, it seems that they are mixing up their shots, but the ones that are going high are going in. The ones that are going hip and low are being saved. As we get Coletzis with the ball, waiting for the rest of his offensive unit to get through the box. You got to see who wants to play tomorrow for a state title. Uh, this is close. And I'm not going to say the O word, guys, but this is uh, – <laughs> I'm not <laughs> – <laughs> Our producers did not like that. <laughs> it didn't have anything to do with me. <laughs> but they all know. Yeah, everybody you're, was going, no, 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 no. You're thinking it. <laughs> Bonus lacrosse in the last semifinal game that we called. ESD going on an eight-goal unanswered run. But Highland Park was able to bury it away and take themselves to Championship Sunday. What a that game. push call was very interesting. And it was very interesting. I'm glad that you brought that up. Because <laughs> Kimo was the one that got pushed. I don't know yeah. how he could have pushed someone. I feel like I'm watching semi-pro with the alley-oop. Did you see that uh, yes, toe Yes, that drag? was a nice pass shot. It's going to be saved, though, by Clinton. Using that face mask. Yep. In the face. <laughs> pass up to Porter. Porter showing some patience right there in the clear. And Sloan Walker Stewart holding on to the ball. Letting this Woodlands offense settle in. So there's just over nine minutes left here in the game. Woodlands only up by a goal. 10-9 over the Chaps of Westlake. And, guys, we talked about this. It just feels like the Woodlands should be up by more uh, at this point. And Westlake's just hanging around, and we haven't seen the best of Pass Westlake inside so shot far. and a goal right there, off-ball movement. And there you go. There you go, Heckma, right there. But, again. Is that you, Sloan Walker? It was with the assist, I believe, or, or it was him. Let's check out this replay brought to you by Iron Horse. Yep, it looks like it was Sloan Walker with the off ball right by the pipe. How many is that for Sloan? He's, uh, that's a hattie. Yep. That should be a hattie, That's yeah. going to be his third of the game, right? And you both are. The sophomore, Luke Dana, having a very impressive uh, game. He's had three or four points today. Yep. Looked like the defender that was covering him got a little bit lost off ball. The drive up from the hash. Jack O'Rourke with the assist. As there's another violation by Presnell. That's going to be his second. Presnell can't believe it. He's so yeah. upset he, about he, that. He wanted that one back. So a little bit of pressure now on that sophomore. If he gets another violation, Westlake can get an extra man opportunity. Three violations and you go man down. As the Chaps get the ball back on offense here. Boy, look at that slide coming yep. immediately. A little bit of a desk pop. Yep, that's a slight desk pop. Yep, another over and back. And it's going to go back to the Woodlands. As we have Coletzis with it. And the winner of this game will go on to face Highland Park in the state championship game tomorrow at 2.30. As Coletzis gets that matchup that he wants. Yep, there you go. Smart move right there on the off ball. He's got the short stick. Get and away Westlake from him. He's already set up to have that early slide. Yep. Quick go right there. Solid handle by Walker Stewart. Good defensive execution by Westlake. Yep. Starkey with the short stick matchup. Now he's going down the lefty alley. Skip pass too high and out of bounds. Hadn't seen many of those, though, from, from the Woodlands. Yep. But they have, I mean, offensively, they have been error-free. They've been playing pretty much this entire game. You talk about the creativity that they've played with and efficiency. This is the part of the game where they can't afford to make mistakes like that and give these possessions back to Westlake. Yep. And it was a good look. Unfortunately, he just dropped his hands and threw that pass, three-quarter sidearm. If he would have pulled that overhand, it would have been a beautiful skip pass. Yep. Agreed on that one as well. The C's did definitely part. Usually the rule of three when it comes to a skip pass. Ah, 
Opportunistic dodge right there. Shot, and it goes in wow. just over the shoulder again at Clinton. And Westlake keeps this to a one-goal game. Now that's the response that you were looking for by the Chaps. Incredible goal. Yeah, he does a great job getting that defense to rotate, and then Bessett utilizes that hitch and gets the jumper and puts that pass. Yep. Clinton. The high point commit, capitalizing on that opportunistic dodge off ball. Runs right by the approaching defender. And Coach Torpy, the high point head coach, has got to be happy with Bessett's uh, second half. It seems like he's really kind of woken up. Yep. Taking advantage of that. Coach Torpy out in Greensboro, North Carolina. Been there for quite some time. As the ball is going to get awarded to the Woodlands, Coletsis is going to pick it up off the restart. Now let's see if the Woodlands stay with their calling card to respond after, after a goal by the Chaps. Yep. Coletsis slips, but he maintains possession of the ball. As we get an off-ball mirror here from Coletsis, sweeping to the middle. Back down the lefty alley is Crouch. Down to X. Walker Stewart surveying the field over to Stewart. Stewart with it. Shot clock just over 40 seconds. Plenty of time for the Highlanders to still capitalize here. As we get Crouch again coming up the hash. Pump fakes, throws it up to O'Rourke. O'Rourke swings it. Step down shot, saved again by Makes Silva. Yeah, that made, made it easy for Silva. Yep. Good display of passing on offense right there. Oh, looked like Porter was coming up. Looked like they were starting to try to snap into a 10-man there. Well, we've seen them do it all year, and they, there's been a lot of times where they've been effective with their 10-man ride. Yep. Two ways of running the 10-man. you got the two poles pistoning in the middle, just like pistons of an engine. Up and back, and then the two short sticks are onside's responsibility. Onside's means you can't have more than four over that midline in the ride. As Westlake gets the ball back on offense, trying to keep it hot here too. Dodge from the middle of the field. Nifty little flip action. Yep. Skipping it back over to the other side, flipping the field. Dodge down the righty alley. Double team coming. Porter got the ball on the deck. Scrum forward on the low, low pipe. And it's going to roll out, and they're going to keep it with the Chaps. Quick restart here. Freaking Schmidt looking for the ball. He's got the short stick matchup that he wants. Whew. Going to have to go quick here. Only about 15 seconds Bounces left. Bounces out. Shot just goes wide. Oh, man. 10 seconds left, or excuse me, 11 seconds left in the shot clock. Well, that looked, that looked good from this, from this angle coming off the head of that stick. Yep. You know what they say on that one, right? What's that? Thing had eyes. <laughs> <laughs> shot goes wide again six seconds left now five on the shot clock Westlake still's got possession of the ball here quick pass to the wing step in shot goes wide again they're getting some solid looks here coach Jernigan unfortunately yeah shot's just a little too wide yep. never got an opportunity to reset that shot clock yep and here come the Highlanders in the clear Clinton with it quarterback in this clear. Porter, the senior with it. He's going to find O'Rourke in the corner. Oh, <laughs> nice check right there. There's our guy that we talked Just about in the pregame, Caden Frank. Oh, but he's going to draw a flag on O'Rourke. O'Rourke heading down to the low block. Looks to pass it on the inside. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And they're swarming. And a helmet's going to come off. And he is down and that does not look like that was very, very Oh, yep, yep, and yep, exactly. It didn't look like it was a very friendly exchange after that play, but he's okay. And the Highlanders are going to go on the extra man. Yeah, he was a little upset. You know, the first rule is no touching of the hair. <laughs> of course. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no touching of the hair or face. Let's fight. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I think Rick killed the guy. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> Yep. 
Uh, I'm t- uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're big movie quotes guys. Yeah, know, if you couldn't right. tell. <laughs> and you get you get us started. It's like a oh it's like God. an avalanche. <laughs> it just keeps rolling, man. <laughs> well, Let's fight. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get a hand grenade, Brick? I don't know. Sixty percent of the time it works all the time. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> There's going to be a timeout by the Woodlands. Coach DeMeo is going to talk some things over. We're going to take a break from this laughing fit. We'll be right back after this. I love the idea that when you pull into the service garage, your name comes up on the screen. I will always drive a soul. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at our Dallas and Fort Worth Sewell Infinity locations. We've done both, new and pre-owned. It's the same experience. It's, it's everything's the same. They make it too easy to even think about going anywhere else. Discover our wide variety of pre-owned vehicles at Sewell.com today. And we're back here at Buddy Eccles Field, our second semifinal game that we've been calling. The Woodlands. Up by a goal, 11-10 over the Chaps of Westlake. There's just over four minutes left. And Dalton, you know, talking to Coach DeMeo, they're coming out. They have the sector man opportunity. Are they going to keep it with a look for Coletsis, or do you think they try to utilize more of these seniors here? You know, I think Dana's had a pretty hot game. You know, really all three of the Stewart brothers. Um, and then also Starkey. I mean, they've done a really good job balancing the offense. Um, and, you know... Chemo, a little quiet on the stat sheet. Um, you know, if we had hockey assist, I think he would have a lot of assist. He's their typical, like, their initiator, and then they're swinging and they're reattacking because they've been very patient. Um, but I look for them to really capitalize because it's going to be six on four. Yeah, Coach. I'm definitely with you on that, Coach, but it, I, I feel like Kimo Coletsis have definitely put his imprint on this game. You talk about it, just his assists and his ability to draw those defenders out to make the extra pass. He's been doing that this entire game, and that's the reason why the Woodlands is, is up by one. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a wheel action for behind, yeah. shifting into a 2-2-2. Crouch down over and aside to Stewart. Walker Stewart steps in, Crouch has got a screenshot and a goal. And that right there, beautiful display of passing by the Highlander extra man unit down to the corner, back up top. Rich Crouch capitalizes with a nice solid lane on the strong hand. You know, you guys have talked about your conversation with Coach DeMeo and the way that he has these guys playing, but how ex- just exquisite was this, you know? Boy, it's right there for Ridge Crouch. Yeah, you see it, see it in the uh, replay. He does a really good job of floating to encourage that defender to slide towards the ball carrier, and then great quick release. He was already set up in that pre-shooting platform. They were in a pre-roll two on the man down. Transition pass is going to go wide. And that's the thing. You get him in a half roll a little bit in the extra man. What I mean by half roll is like you could see everybody starting to follow the ball towards that low corner, and it overloads a side. Woodlands does a really good job moving the ball faster before they can actually rotate to cover Crouch, and he's in that corner in that space, and that's why you get your hands free. Let it fly. Like, shoot it any way you want at that point. He's got the hot hand. Keep him with the hot hand. As there's an attempt right there, a little press right there by the chaps, but ends up not going in the net. There's a play on. They're going to call a procedure. And it looks like they're going to give it back to Westlake. As we get order with the slide. That's just picking your pocket right there. Right up the field. Here comes Logan Brenner. Or Bremner, excuse me. Over to you-know-who. Sophomore number one. Westlake. Trying to turn him into a double team right now. Yeah, they are chasing him down. Yes. Coach DeMeo is going to keep that timeout in his pocket. As there's just over 240 left here in the fourth quarter. Woodland's up by two. And the big thing is, it's been a lot of back and forth. Woodland's has maintained a lead here. Through most of this game, as we get Crouch with it on the short stick matchup behind the cage. 
looking for a potential outlet, runs by his man, swings it up top, pass to the inside to Kaletsis. He elects to have some patience. Pass down to, to Crouch, wide open, five-hole goal. And he sweeps the ice like Gretzky on that one. And I think that's his fourth. That is his fourth. Excellent job by the Woodlands, really kind of utilizing that clock and working it down, uh, being patient. Skip pass from Dana. They, I think they lost track of Rich Crouch. You certainly don't want to do that, especially today. And he stings that one well. Yeah, great job of pointing that out, Coach, because I'm telling you that's the first time that I saw them under 20 seconds on their shot clock this entire match. Yep. Running down that shot clock, never a bad thing, especially when it ends in a goal. And they do another solid job possessing the ball on offense. Lulling you to sleep. Yes, rocking the baby. <laughs> <laughs> As we get the Chaps off the faceoff, brought to you by 214 Lacrosse. That last goal, again, brought to you by Natalie Burkhartler's State Farm Agency here in oh, Dallas Fort Worth. Great pickoff by Elijah Porter there. Yeah. Porter's going to be rubbing his hips after that last one. But yeah. solid job by him all game long. The senior showing up for the Highlander defense. I would say that this lead is unsurmountable, Ooh. but we saw different. Pass out in front. Shot wide. Solid big body slide right there by Brett Mays. Logan Bremner with that attempt. And Mays let him know that he was in the middle of the field yeah. after that shot. Oof. Holy moly. Aggressive play on defense. Shot in front is going to be saved. Big save. Mays picks it up for the Chaps. Swings it up through the clear here. Kaletsis on the ride back. Attempted check goes unsuccessful. Chaps have it. Sweeping to the right. Uh-oh. Get on Shot transition. Ooh. Goes wide. Backed up by the Chaps. Oh, Westlake got away with they one They sure did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Just under a minute here in the game. Woodland's up by three. Westlake trying to make something happen to chip away here. Got to go quick if you're the Chaps. Shot high again. Frickin' Schmidt thought about it. Just Excellent missed. job by the Woodlands widening them out to decrease their shooting angle. Yep, stretching on the perimeter for sure. Rollback attempt. Pass over again. Ooh, oh, solid. Oh, that was a solid go, but it ended up being a little high right there. Flag's going to be down. I think it was Porter. Went right to the face <laughs> of Jared Bissett right there. Elijah Porter waited until 30 seconds left in this game to return the favor <laughs> for what the Chaps have been doing this entire game. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was a how's your uncle and everybody yeah. right there. Checking in on all the relatives after that headshot. It's going to be the game clock is going to be under. The allotted time yep. for the penalty. Going to have to go man. quick here. Going to have to try to take advantage of it. And unfortunately, the ball is going to roll over the midline. Kaletsis is going to pick it up. Clock winding under 20 seconds here. And I think there's going to be a timeout by Coach DeMeo. And Jack Hamlin... <laughs> certainly letting the Woodlands faithful know that they've got this one pretty much sewn up here. Three goals on a lead here with eight seconds left in the game. Oh, this has been a fantastic game uh, by the Woodlands. Everything from the moment they got onto the field, they, they have not let off up. And Coach DeMeo uh, and his ability to coach these guys up to play perfect offensively and defensively has shown up. They're taking down the number two seed uh, in, in the THSLL uh, state tournament, and that's a huge undertaking. They find themselves on this field tomorrow against Highland Park in a repeat of a game that they played out in the Woodlands, man, that's going to be, you guys call that game, yep. I call it as well. Yep. So we know how tight that game was, and, hmm, boy, do we have ourselves a good one on tap tomorrow. Who yeah, would have thought? really, that, that game, I mean, Woodlands had that in hand until the second half, really in the fourth quarter when Highland Park went on a run um, to take that home and edged them out. 
But, you know, right now, I think offensively, I mean, these guys look very, very dangerous. Um, just their creativity, like we talked about at halftime, has been put on display today. Who would have thought two guys in their first year as head coaches here in the state will end up meeting in the state title game tomorrow as the clock winds down. And that is going to do it here at Buddy Eccles Field. The Woodlands moves on to Championship Sunday. They're going to play the Highland Park Scots. And we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with a game recap after this. back the final score Woodlands 13 Westlake 10 and our post game show here brought to you by Tudor Doctor also sponsoring our offensive player of the game and coach Jernigan Mr. Heckman let's talk about Mr. Rich Crouch yeah he did an incredible job I mean it was by committee for sure today yeah. by you know Sloan Walker Cooper Starkey and Luke Dana um, and certainly chemo, but Rich Crouch sticking four goals. You saw it from the perimeter. You saw it on his off-ball ability. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I, you, we hit it the nail right on the head when it comes down to Rich Crouch. Offensively, the job he did, Sloan Walker, you point that out. I just think that the Woodlands played a per perfect game. And cohesively, uh, this was the game that they had to play to get this victory versus Westlake. I mean, error-free. They've got to feel good about the way that they played today and look forward uh, to tomorrow because, man, if they could come in with this momentum and creativity offensively, well, we're going to have ourselves a, bar a barn burn tomorrow and certainly the consistency that was the one thing they let their foot off the gas the first time they played against Highland Park um, so look for them to continue that and just keep their foot on the metal pedal yeah okay and let's take a look at some of the, the highlights from the game and again like we talked about Westlake did a pretty solid job on offense and they leaned on that gauge freaking Schmidt and again you know some solid patience on the off ball too by them but again, I mean, we gotta we gotta seriously talk about that leadership from Coach DeMeo and that offense that they had running all game long, guys. Yeah, Sloan Walker, um, not only facilitating but also just putting his body on the line to put some points on the board. Yep, and we gotta give them a little bit of credit too, especially with this attack unit, the off ball movement. I mean, their freshmen coming up big too. We could see it right here, Stockton Stewart with a nice inside finish. And again, the off-ball movement that we mentioned, moving with purpose is something that was big for these guys, especially with this aggressive, aggressive Westlake defense. Yeah, moving with purpose, but also the creativity offensively. You guys pointed that out. And, you know, look, I, I cannot complain about anything that the Woodlands did. I think I came in expecting for Westlake to outmuscle these guys, and it was going to be the physicality that took over and made the difference. Boy, they finessed them to death <laughs> and get this win. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't get a chance too much to see it here, but you know, Woodlands really came out and they were very they were the more aggressive ones on the defensive end. Yeah. Yep. Number lot. forty, uh Aiden Isaka. I want to point him out. He was always great on his slides and double teams. Yep, and not to mention Mr. Elijah Porter too. I mean, look, he was sliding aggressively, he drew that penalty towards the end, but again, like that physical play, something that can set the tone early. Well, this is just beautiful. Yeah. And I tell you what, I don't know about you guys. Matchup tomorrow, these goalies, Ben Abel versus the duo of Sue, of Kroom and Clinton. Boy, 
Yeah. Uh, hey, this is going to be pretty good. And not to mention the matchup, too, at the X. I mean, Presnell and Musa. I mean, that, that game that we called, the very first game of the year, they were locking up a lot. Musa got the best of them towards the end. But, I mean, it's definitely going to be quite a show tomorrow. I mean, the stage is certainly set for tomorrow. And there it is, as you can see it. Who is going to hoist that trophy tomorrow? We're going to find out tomorrow on Game On Sports Network. Woodlands. Highland Park, and we'll see you all soon here on Game On Sports Network. I'm Chris Heron, alongside Harrison Heckman and Dalton Jernigan. Thanks for joining. And I said your name backwards. It's okay. Heckman Harrison. <laughs> it happens all but the time. But we will <laughs> see you guys tomorrow.